Hi everyone, it's Betty here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. And today in this video, I'm going to show you my process painting. The same scenery, but observed from a different perspective and from a different time in the day. So I want to quickly show you my drawing process. So I begin by these foreground items, the ceramic candle lighthouse, and then I drew the three little snowmen, and then I drew the window frame and the curtain. After that, I drew the tree outside and then the house behind. So again, it's all about seeing in layers and then start drawing from the very front and then the things in the middle, and then the things on the back. So today I'm showing you my painting process in real time. It took me about 10 minutes. Because it was getting dark, I had to hurry. So, but not rushing, because I'm pretty quick at painting anyway. So as you can see, I just wetted the sky area first with clear water by squeezing my water brush. And now I'm laying on some lemon yellow to show the sunshine behind the clouds. So that's wet on wet. And now I just mixed ultramarine blue with purple. Again, wet on wet, but not stirring too much with the yellow paint because I don't want it to get too muddy. So just laying these stripes as I observe. Okay, so I just finished the sky very quickly. I'm not going to over stir it anymore. I just want the, uh, the two colors to blend together nice and soft. Now I'm going to paint the next layer. Over the sky is the house on the other side of the courtyard. So now I'm mixing the exterior's color by using the leftover green mixed with a little bit of yellow ochre. So houses are three-dimensional, so now I'm trying to add a bit of shade color, especially for the part that's like sinking in. So I'm grabbing some ultramarine blue mixed with a little bit of purple. It's good, nice color for shades. And a little bit um, of green mixed with that leftover blue the turquoise color for the windows because the windows are reflecting the tree colors around them and the rooftop of the house is covered by the snow so I'm just going to leave it white and not touch it now I am just adding a brush stroke for the walkway in the courtyard so I use raw sienna mixed with a leftover um, green to paint the walkway and these footprints on the snow. So now I'm actually slowing down and looking at the scenery and think about what sh I should paint next. So during the painting process, I think it's very important to kind of sometimes stop and ponder about the result that we have right now and think about how we want to move on and make decisions rather than making a lot of unnecessary brush strokes. It's a good idea to slow down and stop and think. So I just decided to paint the living room wall by using medium yellow mixed with a little bit of yellow ochre. It's a nice warm yellow tone. And I left a, uh, a stripe white because that side is very bright. And now I'm painting the curtain with magenta pink. As you can see on my watercolor palette, I overlapped the pink with the leftover ultramarine blue because I, I want the pink to have a more of a variety. And now I'm wetting the table area and ready to paint it with burnt sienna, nice and loose. And I think a lot of times painting can be 
pretty relaxing and easy. Once you understand what you see and you know how to translate it into abstract lines and colors. So now I'm adding the shade color for the snowman and everything else. And I mix this color by putting together ultramarine blue, lots of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna because it's a very dark brown. Ultramarine blue really helps to darken the brown. And now I just mix um, a bit of uh, pink into the leftover dark brown to add another layer for the curtain. As you can see, I left a tiny stripe and also some tiny spots from the first layer unpainted. Just so this curtain, it looks more dense. It has more three dimension. Okay, so now I just grab some ultramarine blue and just put it directly onto the window frame there because that's the shade part. Okay, and now I am grabbing some medium yellow, mixing it with burnt sienna to get this color for the candlelight holder. It's a ceramic cabin. Okay, and now I think I'm ready to paint the snowman. So I just grab some red to paint the parts of their hats. The mother snowman is wearing a red hat and this little snowman is wearing a little red hat and red scarf. So just put the red on very loosely. And just grabbing some ultramarine blue and this is the shade color for the left hand side of these snowmen because the light as you can see it comes from the right right hand side now these snowmen are looking more three-dimensional every section of their body is a snowball which is spherical. Add another layer. Ultramarine blue mixed with a little bit green and a tiny bit of uh, pink purple. And just adding some accentuation for the shade part of these snowman's spherical bodies. and grab some red to paint the little red stripes on this snowman's scarf. Mixing in a little bit of ultramarine blue into the red to paint the shade part of the little snowman's hat and also the mother snowman's hat. And grabbing some light green to paint this green belt on her hat and now I just grab some black to paint the father snowman's hat okay so now I'm grabbing some leftover color that mix of ultramarine blue green and a little bit pink to paint the shadow of the curtain on the wall so just a few brush strokes Nice and transparent. Okay, so now I'm kind of breaking the rules about color mixing. So I just grabbed some raw sienna and some black because I want a really dark, dark brown. So I usually do that by mixing in ultramarine blue into the brown, but this time I decided to put black in because it's getting dark outside and um, the tree trunks are actually very dark, like silhouettes. So I decided to mix in black this time. That's how I feel. So there's actually no right or wrong way to mix colors sometimes. 
and the dark, this darker brown tone really helps to bring out the power of this landscape using contrast. So now we can kind of see the uh, charm of the sky behind the tree branches because of the contrast. If everything is the same intensity, nothing is going to look interesting. So contrast in a piece of art is very important. And now I'm spending more time to paint this tree here by mixing in more paint pigment of black and raw sienna and less water over the first layer that I painted just to give it more definition because this tree is really a central focus in this sketch after the snowman. Snowman's leading right into this tree and this tree is supporting the charm of the sky and the house behind. It's really worth the time to um, work more on it. So I really find the drawing and painting process to be really engaging with the real life world, with nature. Because in other times, we'll be just walking around and staring at things, not really looking at them. So it's very hard to appreciate their beauty until we pick up a pen or a brush to start tracing their forms. And lastly, just add a bit of shadow for the window there. And final bit of contrast for this daddy snowman here. That's it. Okay, I think I forgot to, to paint the mother snowman's scarf. I'm just gonna do that very quickly. It was red paint and a bit of um, black. There we go. So as you know, I really like sketching the same scenery over and over again, but every time I try to see it from a different perspective at different times. So that's it for today's video. So thank you so much for watching. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. And I will see you again very soon. Have a great day. And just a quick reminder that the first class of the beginner's drawing and painting will begin this Saturday, January the 15th. So I'm teaching this class live on Zoom. So if you have been drawing and painting for a while and you're still um, struggling to improve, then it's a great idea to start from the bare basics.